Okay, we are in Zechariah chapter 4. Remember, these are some of the visions that the prophet is having. Uh, it's said that he had these visions all in one night. It was a very active night where the Lord was giving uh, Zechariah visions. Remember, God works on us when we are asleep. And this is a very active night of visions for Zechariah. And I'm just so glad that it was recorded for us. So this one has a lot to do with the power of God and his continual leadership to make sure that the temple gets built and Jerusalem gets healthy. And so you see as this is going on, you see all sorts of images. So let's go through them. So uh, the very first part of the chapter, it's about how the angel woke up Zechariah. And then he showed him a vision of some things. So you see a golden lampstand, a bowl, uh, lamps on top of it, channels to the lamps and to olive trees. Okay, remember, we're talking about in ancient times with a simple olive oil burning lamp. So the fire has to do with the authority, uh, the presence of God. Um, this is stuff that God is doing that man is not doing. So let's talk about it. So there's a golden lamp stand. So you've got a stand for the lamp and a bowl. The bowl collects the oil um, and the oil is derived from the olive trees that is being mentioned. Uh, it says there are seven channels to the lamps. Um, so there's seven lamps on it with seven channels to the lamps. Okay, this is interesting. Some people, some scholars believe that these different lamps are all joined together at one wick or one stem or one ability to get oil to them and they're all sort of burning together. It is a picture of the church in Jerusalem. Certainly the lamps are a picture of this burning light, the offering the light of truth to the world. But there's this idea that there's going to be a unity among them. And this could be a picture of the Gentiles being a part of the Jewish church. Um, the Jerusalem temple is going to be this pinnacle of the Jewish church getting the truth out, getting the light out into the world. Um, and this is the way prophecy works, man. It's all over the place. There's lamps and bowls and wicks and pipes and trees. And it's just the way that prophecy is. And it's pretty exciting and you can go to just basic articles online to see what different scholars think this stuff is about and once you start getting a taste for how the scholarship leans you will yourself begin to learn oh I bet that's what that is and guys it makes reading the Bible fun um, so we are that's sort of the picture of the bowls and the lamps um, then we get to um, a vision uh, well a statement that is very very popular in uh, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 and he's basically the angels asking him, do you know what this is and he said all of this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel <laughs> Zerubbabel a lot of people don't use that as a biblical name for their kid Zerubbabel is the leader of the Jewish people that was in Babylon remember we have exile this Jewish people are out of exile Zerubbabel was a prince of the Jewish people in Babylon. They are out of that exile. They are now coming back and they're being sent back to their homeland after 70 years. And Zerubbabel is a very important figure within the Jewish leadership. He was like a prince. He was a leader. He was one of them. And he's a leader to get back and rebuild the temple and rebuild the, rebuild the city. And there's a very famous statement in here in Zechariah 4 verse 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. What is that pertaining to? All of the lamps and the oils and the trees and everything feeding into this. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. You are going to be the light. Let's get to the city. Let's rebuild everything. But it's not going to be done by might. You're not the one that's giving the oil to the lamps. You're not the one that's giving the inspiration or the light. It's not going to be by power. Say that to Zerubbabel, even though he's a prince, even though he has authority. It's not about that, but it's by my spirit. It is the spiritual force in God, um, through God, through you, that's going to make any of this happen. And what a great rule to live by. It is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by God's spirit that these things are going to happen. The chapter continues with more talk about the oil and the light and um, everything feeding into this completion of the city. Um, and then it ends with two that are anointed to serve the Lord. And that two is most likely another 
throwback to Joshua, which we've already talked about, and Zerubbabel. But the point of these, the point of this whole thing is that God is the leader. He is the one that is making this stuff happen. His city is going to be rebuilt. His people are going to be okay when they return to him. He will return to them, and God's going to have it work out very well for people. And we are flying through these visions that Zechariah had on a very active night. And the point of it is that God is in control. And just remember verse 6, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. What a great thing for us to think about our life. We want our lives to be by God's spirit, not by my, our might or not by our power. So that's Zechariah chapter 4. It's a pretty crazy ride. We're going to keep on going. Hey, thanks for doing the Bible together. Mm -hmm.